beautiful choppers. How are you guys today? Thank you for joining me for another official edition of You're in the cut with Chop It Up. What's it you're in the cut with Chop It Up? What's it you're in the cut with Chop It Up? Hey guys, if you're new past my channel, I'm Pumpkin and we just sip on the tea and drink on the juice. I don't know why I say that. I just like that thing. Anyway, I hope everyone is having a wonderful fresh start of the day. I have a story that I want to talk about today. And I think it's picking up a little bit of traction now. First of all, I didn't want to... Yeah, I kind of did want to talk about the story. But I wanted to see if the friend involved in this particular situation, which we'll get to... If she was going to be held liable in any way or if something was going to happen. But it doesn't look like that. So let's talk about this because I don't think, once again, that it got the coverage that it should have on TV. And I'd like to talk about those particular stories that I feel don't get enough attention. You guys probably heard about this story, and if you haven't, hear it, hear it go. All right. It, this happened in Pelham, California. The California Highway Patrol, they started to investigate a pedestrian was, um, that a pedestrian was struck and killed on the highway on Wednesday morning, y'all, okay? On June 17th, this happened, 2020, at about 3.46 a.m., when they responded, they saw that a pedestrian had been hit. And the person that hit her was a, um, a pel. And the car that hit her was a 2007 black Hyundai Santa Fe. And it was going like 60 miles per hour when that car collided with this young lady who was 25 years old. They said she was running in lane number one. Some stories say she was butt butterball naked. Some don't mention it at all. And her name is Markeela Smith. They call her Tequila. All right. So now, y'all. The thing about this story is that throughout this whole entire day and the day prior... She got with a friend. Her name was Catherine Scott. And they were hanging out all day. They were partying. They were popping pills. And they, um, Catherine Scott says that Michaela was drinking along with taking this, what she called a football Xanax. All right, she even at one point showed Kayla passed out in the driver's seat. No, in the passenger seat because she apparently had too much to drink and to smoke. You know, I'm not really sure. But um, I guess at some point throughout the day, they met up with Kayla's, um, with Catherine's brother and... Michaela and Catherine's brother got into an altercation, and at that time, she said Michaela threw her phone in the highway, breaking the screen, and she also posted about that. She said this Apple, like, uh, cover cracked phones, and then she said she posts something else that says, I can't do drunk bitches like it seemed like she was getting annoyed with her friend because of the behavior because she constantly said that um she never seen anybody act that way off of uh just taking a popping a pill or whatever but she says that at that point Michaela asked her to take her to wherever she wanted to go, and she, as a good friend that she is, Miss Catherine Scott, she said, I'm going to go ahead and take her. She says she gets in a van. They proceed to the location where Michaela wants to be dropped off at, and her van breaks down. So when the van breaks down, they call for rides to come and get them, and 
she says that Michaela is still freaking out, cursing everybody out. She throws the keys on the highway that the brother had to go and retrieve the keys off of the highway and find them. Oh, God, all of this. And they were just out earlier, y'all, sh- waving around guns in the car, you know, g- throwing up gang signs, showing off chains and drinking and smoking and partying. And on the way to wherever Michaela had to go, the car breaks down. So she says, I'm going to call my baby daddy. I'm going to call my baby daddy. And Catherine is like, well, go ahead, because really... I don't really want you to ride with us acting crazy anyway, even though Catherine says that she said she would have took her. But what winds up happening is that Catherine and her brother's ride gets there before Michaela's baby daddy, as she called them, arrived on the scene. And Catherine said, um, she said, no, I'm going to sit here and wait for my baby daddy. So she said she left her with the van, the broke down van and the car keys and told her, you know, I'm leaving with my ride and you can wait for your baby daddy or whatever. One of her children said that he would go get her and Catherine and her brother left. And after that, that is when Markela got hit by the car and is now dead. Can y'all believe that? And then Catherine, after all of that, had the audacity to get on live the day she finds out that her friend that she hung out with all the prior day is dead after you left her on the side of the road at 3 o'clock in the morning, intoxicated, high off a Xanax, an anti whatever, a psychotropic drug, you know what I'm saying? And out her mind, you said it out your mouth that she was acting erratically. You never seen anybody act like that before. That would give me, you know, more instinct to want to protect my friend and get her in the car where I'm at. But you left her there and now she's dead and you're all over the internet talking about you didn't kill her, you didn't do this and telling the story. She got some nerve. I just want y'all to hear a little clip of what she had to say. Okay, y'all. Okay. Because this girl is a hot mess. Hold on. 30 minutes, like, away from Marina Valley, the car broke down. So the car broke down. We on the side of the road. We chilling in the car because we got a ride coming or whatever. Markeela ass, she drunk as fuck. Oh, God. And I ain't never seen no liquor do that to nobody. I don't fuck around with liquor, so maybe that's why I don't know. But I ain't never seen nobody act that way off no motherfucking liquor, bro. She get out the car tripping. Like, they, her and my brother start tripping. She calling them all type of bitches, whatever. They get, they getting into it. They going out it, whatever. That's on them. So then she cool, right? She cool. She like, let me use your phone to call my baby daddy. I give her the phone to call her baby daddy. Like, here, no problem. She call her baby daddy, but she's so loaded. The bitch say, not even the bitch, because I'm not disrespecting her, but that's how I talk. So she call her baby daddy, and she like, yeah, um, I need you to come get me, but I'm going to take this bitch phone. Bitch, what bitch? Snatch? What? Give me my shit. You're not going to take nothing, and now you can't even call her nigga no more. I'll call him for you. What? On speaker. So, um, bitch, shut up, talk about online. I can't even see my comments, but I can see that. But anyway, so, the bitch, like, um, yeah, she told her baby daddy come get her, whatever, whatever. We get into it all the time. I'm still on the phone with her baby daddy so he can hear this shit. Her baby daddy knows how she get down because he get on the phone with my brother, like, oh, she's just drunk, she's just drunk. This is how she get when she's drunk. That's cool. So, just by that alone, y'all. It seems like this girl may have some type of drinking problem or drug problem. But still and all, I'm not trying to, you know, justify the fact that the someone, you know, has lost their lives. But um, this is just so tragic. Now, she goes on to say a little more. She goes on to show the pills. I mean, there's so much controversy along with this story. There's so many, so many rumors. They say that um, Michaela could have possibly been robbed from her hand gun, you know, from the brother and the sister duo here. 
and um, that possibly Catherine was dating the baby father. You know, it was really weird. And then at one point she goes on to saying that Kayla was driving and I couldn't see anywhere on her snaps where Kayla was driving because she was so incapacitated. It You know, it looked like to me after pretty much the night had went on, it seemed like even in the daytime she was pretty much passed out. But anyway, um, listen to what more she has to say and y'all tell me what y'all think. Your location. And then again, the I got the text messages to prove that shit. This nigga say, oh yeah, I just put the babies in the car. I got the baby in the car seat. I'm on my way. Mind you, my ride still is an hour away. It takes an hour and some change. So we all right there waiting. She's supposed to be waiting for her ride. I'm waiting for mine. See, feel me? So mine's pull up first. My brother is telling her, chill out, chill out. We can all keep turning up, turning up or whatever. So then our ride pull up or whatever. I'm like, bro, just come on. Like, get in the car. Because for one, I don't never leave nobody no motherfucking where. Ain't never left nobody nowhere. So then I'm like, bro, just get in the car. She tell me she not finna get in the car, but we can fight. And she see daddy. I'm waiting for my baby daddy. Bitch, I'm finna wait for my baby daddy. For one, I'm not finna beg no bitch to do nothing. And I'm not finna fight no bitch neither. So, bitch, if that's the option, fight or leave you here to wait for your baby daddy, cool. I will leave you right the fuck here. And then motherfuckers are saying I left her. That is a grown-ass woman. I didn't leave shit. She had the same opportunity to get in the car that I had. Nobody didn't tell Markeela you cannot get in this car. Matter of fact, I told her, Markeela, get in the fucking car. And she didn't want to do that. So then... Yeah, even if it wasn't dark and deserted, even if it had a lot of traffic on it, I don't think that I would have left my friend in the car by herself. I would have kind of forced her to get in the car with me and my brother and the friend that picked me up to at least make sure she got home safely and then I wouldn't have had anything else to do with her ever again. But the young lady lost her life because... She was messing around with a troll like that. That girl didn't seem like no type of joke and no friend that I would like to have had at all at any time in my life, y'all. So I think this is really tragic. A 25-year-old woman lost her life. She does have children. And um, it's just sad. Uh, we've known for a long time that drugs are bad and you mixing stuff together, y'all. Mm -mm, it ain't gonna end up well let me know what y'all think in the comment section don't forget to subscribe and turn that bell button on for some more stories y'all and i hope to see you guys back for another edition of you're in the cut with chop it up i said you're in the cut with chop it up i said you're in the cut with chop it up i see y'all around for something Bye, babies.